Okay, so in the last video, we, we, we concluded that uh, force and displacement was not really a very good way for us to characterize material properties. Uh, you know, if you want to know how strong something is, force is not really a very, uh, very good way to do it. Um, and so to uh, help to, to drive that point home, um, I, I wanted to uh, do a little demo here. And so I've got a couple of balloons. And they are supposedly the same balloons. And push my tablet out of the way there. So what we want to do is I'm going to say, all right, I'm going to put the two balloons, push the two balloons onto these um, little uh, beds of nails here. Okay, so it's a bunch of sharp nails. Those are, I assure you, quite sharp. You can perhaps see that. Okay, um, and you know, I, if this is this is kind of equivalent to the sample. A and B that I had sketched in the last video, you know, where one of them is smaller than the other. So if I were to test these two, I would say, well, which balloon is stronger? And I took them, and and uh, I'm more nervous than than, than you are, because <laughs> you have to get protected by the computer. Um, if I push on these, right, and I push with the same, you have to trust me. I'm pushing with the same force. Which one's going to pop first? I mean, I think you know the answer. I'm getting nervous now. Right? I'm pushing. Oh, I'm pushing pretty hard now, actually. I don't even see how much that nail's going in there. This is making me nervous. I don't want to push a hand down onto it. Wow, these are strong, <laughs> strong balloons. Holy smokes! Okay, there you go. So <laughs> that one did pop. It popped first. This one, and. You know, if I put this right here by the camera, you can actually see that the load is being supported by all 16 nails. Right? So I can push quite hard on this. And perhaps I'll do it this way to protect my hands. But I can push actually surprisingly hard. Wow, this is harder <laughs> than I thought. Holy mackerel! Well, there you go. Uh, I had to push. Well, I guess that was 16 times as hard on that as I did on this one. So that's what we want to try to capture here as a way of characterizing material properties. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use stress and strain instead of force and displacement. And so stress. We're going to define stress. Um, okay, we use the Greek letter sigma. I like to just illustrate or indicate what that is. So that's sigma, if you haven't seen it before, lowercase Greek sigma. Um, and that's going to be equal to force over the area that's supporting the load. So in our case, it was kind of like the 16 nails. Um, and it's, in fact, the initial length. And I'll do a little sketch, uh, initial, initial area, I'll do a little sketch to support that in a moment. Um, and then the strain, we use the Greek letter epsilon. Okay, that's epsilon. And strain, we write as that change in length, which we had previously called uh, x, we call it uh, delta L most commonly here. And then we divide by the initial length. So how long was it? Um, and so what I think I'll do right now is I'll do a little sketch here of a specimen. Again, we'll just go to our simple cylindrical specimen for now. And then what I'll do is I'll sketch and exaggerate a little bit here. Well, maybe not that much. I'll exaggerate what happens when the sample experiences a load. In this case, the load is being applied along the long axis of this cylinder. Oh, that's a bad sketch. There we go. Okay, so here we go. We've got a great little force in there. So the black is unloaded, and the green color here is while the uh, sample is loaded. Okay, and with that, armed with that, we can of course we can 
clarify a few things here. So we'll write in here the initial length. That's consistent with what we saw in the last video. And then we're going to have the elongation. Now in this case, because I chose to have the force applied top and bottom here with the no translational or, or with translational equilibrium, like that is that this cylinder is not moving up or anything, um, and it's um, pulled the top and bottom. Um, we're going to get the elongation happening half of it at the top, half at the bottom. So I'm going to write that in. Okay. So there's our delta L, but not not only all, all of it, only half. Okay. And there's delta L again by two. <clears throat> The other thing that will destroy your attention to is that this cross-sectional area here that I've shaded in, in in the dark, in the black color, would be our original cross-sectional area. And so while we're not actually going to deal with this, there is there are certain times when we do want to concern ourselves with that area, um, but, and, and that's this true stress. Um, but what we're dealing with here is actually technically called the engineering stress although, and the engineering strain, although if, if someone, an engineer just says stress, you know, certainly nine times out of 10 or more, they're talking about the engineering stress. If it's the true stress, that'll be mentioned, but we're not dealing with that today, so this is absolutely fine. And so we have now defined the terms that we need in this equation for stress and for strain. And that's fantastic. So then the last piece of the puzzle here is to show you that if we were to then do that for you know those two different samples, like we did in the last video, where uh, I'll remind you, say we had you know, sample A that looked like this, and sample B was really big. Um, I made them, and it's a larger cross-sectional area. We saw that the spring constant would be different, but now what we want to do, now we realize that if we plot stress versus strain, both sample A and B will give the same uh, the same slope. Um, so they're sample size independent, and we have, uh, again, a constant of proportionality. This time we call it E, and E is, in fact, at least for metals, called the Young's modulus. And in practice, that's often used for other material classes. That's the Young's modulus. And then the last thing that we can do is rewrite now our Hooke's law expression in terms of stress and strain. Um, so stress is going to be equal to the constant of proportionality, that is what used to be the spring constant, um, times the strain. And that gets a little box because it's important and again that is still Hooke's law. It's just this is now Hooke's law in terms of stress and strain and that's the one that you're going to want to be familiar with. All right, thanks a lot.